Hello, I am an old fart and I have a guilty pleasure. I like knives. I'm not an expert or an official representative of anything or anyone in any way, just like knives. I collect mainly small folding pocket knives, what I like to call non-threatening gentleman's knives. And today we're going to look at one of those in my collection, this model. This is a Wee Knives Gentry. Uh, it's a new addition to my collection. I, I, as I said, I like non-threatening gentlemen's knives. That means knives that aren't too scary for people around me, and knives that have a nice classy look that I can carry to an office. I've also recently come to like modern slip joints for their simplicity and the nostalgia reminding me of my old Boy Scout knife, and, and the modern slip joint is usually very non-threatening. So slip joints can be great NTGKs. So I saw this one reviewed by Wee Knives, which has a great reputation, uh, and it it looked and sounded interesting, and I thought I would give it a try. Here it is. So formally, from Wee Knives, this is the Gentry. It's available, uh, it's a carbon fiber scales, available in two finishes. You see the bolsters here, which are titanium, and they have this interesting streaked black finish on them. And the two models of knives that are available are that finish on the blade, as well as the bolster, or a traditional satin blade with the blackened bolster. So I picked the satin blade because I like satin blades. So that's it, the Wee Gentry. Mechanism, as I said, is a traditional slip joint. There's a nail nick here, and you just pull it open. No lock, push it shut. Now, as you noticed there, in, when I did that action, there is a half stop stops quite firmly at the halfway point, and then you open it the rest of the way. Now, the point of that is that when you're closing it, it stops firmly at that halfway point, so it's not going to snap shut on your hands, and then you can make sure your parts are out of the way, close it the rest of the way. So, traditional slip joint. Uh, the size is one of the really unique things about this knife. I'll go on about it for a bit. This is a long, thin knife. You can see how slim it is. And when opened, it's very long and skinny. Uh, to use some measures, sort of my standard international metric here is the pocket calculator. It's about 1.1 pocket calculators. A lot of my knives are around that size, but none of them that are this thin. It looks very long because of its slimness. If we compare it to a few similar-ish knives. Well, the, the obvious one, I think, is to compare it to the CRKT CEO, another long, slim gentleman's knife. And as you can see, it's about the same thickness and slightly longer than the CEO, and a uh, clip point rather than a drop point blade, which we'll come back to uh, that blade shape in a moment. So a little longer than the CEO. Um, turns out, having done a sample of a few knives, just about exactly the same length as the Benchmade 940 Osborne, but much thinner. So, I don't know, to my eye, take the Osborne away, it looks longer than the Osborne because I'm measuring its length relative to its thickness, I guess. And just to uh, compare it to one other modern slip joint that I have, the, the largest classy looking modern slip joint I have would be the Lion Steel Thrill. And as you can see, it's considerably larger than the Lion Steel Thrill. So, so a long, slim knife. Now it is also a very light knife. The, uh, the carbon fiber allows it, to, and the fact that there just isn't a lot of material there, allows it to be quite light. So it's uh, 54 grams, which is uh, less than the CEO. 59, so lighter than this, less than the Mini Griptilian, which I often compare things to, less than even this 940, the carbon fiber version, less than the Lion Steel Thrill. So it's, I think it's the lightest knife I have that is that big. To get in this weight class, I'd have to go into some tiny knives. So long, thin, and light. The blade, as we said, is very long. It's a uh, three and 3.45 inches long, so close enough to three and a half inches long, um, well over the three inch limit that matters in some places. Nice steel, it's S35VM, same steel that's used on many Chris Reeve knives, 
sharpens easily, takes a good edge, I like it a lot. Here's a, a clip point blade. Now, clip points are okay. I do generally prefer drop point blades, just because I think that they look a little less threatening. Clip points with their multiple curves happening always seem to me to look a little bit more like a hunting knife, you know, designed for cutting flesh and not envelopes. Well, it's okay, but you know, I, I wish there were other blade options. Um, there's a good size sharpening choil here. Now, it's not really needed for choking up because the handle is so long, there's lots of holding room. I, I can't imagine the circumstances where I would feel the need to choke my finger up there, so it's, I'll call it strictly a sharpening choil. Mentioned the body, it's titanium frame and titanium bolsters with that interesting streaked finish on it. I don't know if that's anodized or what, if that'll scratch off with time, we shall see. Um, and a nice carbon fiber inlay. Now the body is sculpted in three dimensions. You can see there's a nice curve in this dimension as well. And there's a curve in this dimension. So there's a definite sort of a bulge feel in the hand that makes it very pleasant and comfortable to hold. Uh, I usually talk about clip options, simple, no clip, no options for clips. Uh, there is a lanyard hole. Um, I don't know why I would put a lanyard in this knife, that would look weird. Uh, but anyway, there's a hole for it. Um, and I usually comment on whether knives are ambidextrous, and this one is sort of. Once it's open, it's fully ambidextrous. Both sides are identical. There's no mechanism, no closing mechanism, so we are very nice and fully ambidextrous. But getting it open is a nail nick, and there's only a nail nick on one side. I guess you couldn't really put it on both sides because it would go all the way through the blade. Although there's no reason you couldn't have it go all the way through the blade, and then it would be a fully ambidextrous knife. So anyway, right hand open, unless you're capable of opening it with your left hand with the nail nick on that side. I can't. Lefties probably can, and otherwise ambidextrous. Uh, we knives are made in China, one of the better Chinese manufacturers, good reputation, really nice tolerances and machining. So I like a lot about this knife. I like that uh, good firm half stop when opening and when closing, makes it feel safe and uh, well engineered. Good blade steel, and it came with a good edge. Right out of the box, it was plenty sharp enough. Not shaving mirror sharp, but more than sharp enough to use. I won't be sharpening it until it goes dull with use and needs to be re-sharpened. And considering this is going to be a light use knife, that'll be a long time. I think it's a nice looking knife, with one exception we'll get to. Uh, classy, classy scales. There's a beautiful pattern in the carbon fiber. If I bring another light over here, maybe I can make that more evident. Shine light from the side. This is that sort of woven type of carbon fiber that has a sort of a three-dimensional feel to it. It looks like you're seeing down into the depth of the weave. Now, I don't know whether you are. Am I looking through some kind of an acrylic deeper into the material, or is it just an optical effect, a refraction effect? I don't know, but it's very attractive. So I like the looks of the knife quite a lot. And I like, uh, in gentlemen's knives, the simple unadorned knife and blade. There is no writing on the knife. There is here the, uh, there we are, the Wee Knives logo, and that's it. No writing, no steel, no manufacturer date, no website, unadorned blade. And I, I think that simplicity is part of the beauty, I like it a lot. It's a very comfortable knife to hold. It's so long <laughs> that you know, there's you know, an easy four-finger grip, lots of room for the thumb. That, as I already mentioned, that three-dimensional curves makes it feel great in the hand. It's just a very pleasant bulge. It fills the right part of the hand. No hot spots at all. No clip to cause a hot spot. So very comfortable to hold and cut with. And being so long and thin, it, this is a great letter opener. So, I mean, I'm an office worker, so for me, for the office, you know, cutting string, you know, cutting an apple, would I? But my, this is a high-end letter opener indeed, so it's it's really nice for that kind of thing. That's some stuff I don't like. Uh, first of all, again, just to come back to the blade shape, the blade is very long and thin, 
and uh, I don't know, that's so long and thin that it, it doesn't look like a pocket knife. It, frankly, I think it looks like a kitchen knife. It looks like a steak knife. In fact, I have had somebody once, when I unfolded this in, uh, in an office environment, I've had someone who actually said, why are you carrying your own steak knife around? Um, and, uh, and that felt weird. Um, I do see people talking about what they do with their knives, and one of the standard things people say is food prep. And my reaction is, really? Do people really do that? Do you, do you actually take a pocket knife out of your pocket and eat with it? You, you know, use it to cut meat and such things? Um, obviously it can. Boy, I can tell you, my, my wife would have a fit if I did that. You know, but the, the sanitary nature of the inside of my pocket being transferred to food. Um, the other thing about the blade being so long and thin is this, I, and we'll get to this when I do my uh, non-threatening rating, but I, I think it looks kind of, it looks like a stiletto. It looks like a stabbing weapon, you know, long and thin, stabby looking. Anyway, that was all one complaint about the fact that the blade is so long. The only other complaint I have really is that uh, I wish it had a clip. Now, I, I know that that would maybe reduce the beautiful, comfortable feeling of the knife, but the trouble with it not having a clip is that when I drop it in my pocket, because it, it, you want it to sit vertically in your pocket like this, and without a clip it doesn't. What it does is fall to the bottom of the pocket and fall over. So it's sitting this way, sort of sideways across the bottom of my pocket, and it's so long that it, it fully occupies the pocket. It's the, this bar sitting at the bottom of the pocket. And it's quite uncomfortable. You can feel it sort of rubbing against my leg and getting caught in the lines of the pants. And uh, I really wish that there was something that would hold it vertical. Also, since it has to be in my pocket, you know, rattling around with my, my car keys and my collection of, you know, volcanic lava and so on, it's going to get scratched to hell. I think a, such a classy looking, decoratively scaled knife that can only be carried in your pocket should come with a leather slip. So as it is, when I'm carrying it, I put it in a Chris Reeve uh, Sabenza slip that I have, um, which is a little large for it, um, it but does the job. But uh, I think a nice, narrow, fitted leather slip would be a good addition for this knife, or a clip, or both. So there's my small list of things I don't like. Let's go through my uh, internationally unknown, not at all famous rating system. So first, my uh, NTGK rating. NTGK is for non-threatening gentleman's knife. We'll do non-threatening, then gentleman's. So for non-threatening, uh, the good news is, being a slip joint, you can open it slowly and you, in fact, you must open it with two hands. So flicking open a uh, knife that can be flicked, here's the CEO, scares people. They say, oh, switchblade. So even though it's not you know, it's too late to explain knife terminology to them. You've scared them. Um, so this knife, which can only be opened two-handed and slowly, is non-threatening. Uh, and the half stop adds to that too. That it's you know, there's no fear of your neighbor thinking, oh my God, it's going to snap it out in his hands. So it, it really does seem non-threatening. Also, the unadorned blade helps. It doesn't look tactical, except for the length. It doesn't look tactical. It doesn't have silly weapony gouges and shapes on it, or pictures of ske uh, skeletons or other things. So I think it does reasonably well as non-threatening. The bad on non-threatening, as we discussed, is that long, stabby-looking blade. So because of the blade, I'm not going to give it an A+. Plus. I'm going to pull it down to just an A for non-threatening. Now, as a gentleman's knife, the good is it's attractive. Attractive scales, attractive finish, nice-looking. And, you know, a nice... It looks like a piece of fine machinery, so the looks are good. The bad news is gentleman's knife, as we said, is carrying it. It's loose in your pocket. It's rattling around with your keys and your sandpaper collection. Um, and uh, and you can't see it. It's down there getting banged up, but you can't appreciate how beautiful it is until you take it out. I mention that just to contrast it with, say, the CRKT CEO, which is has a clip and is designed to be worn like a pen so that you can see it. So this is gentleman's knife doesn't do that. Um, and, and the other thing I'll say uh, and mention, uh, again, I'm not sure how the length of the blade affects the gentleman's knife rating. Uh, it, it's a great letter opener. Is that a good thing? Probably. Uh, but it looks like a steak knife. Is that a good thing? I don't know. Um, the CRKT CEO is pretty clearly a gentleman's knife. I don't know. That just 
That doesn't say steak knife to me. This does. Um, the other thing I'll mention, by the way, in the appearance, uh, it, since I have the CEO out, is I do appreciate the fact that, you know, this is real carbon fiber. This is G10 plastic that has a slight pattern embossed on it so that it looks like carbon fiber. And uh, people who know knives can tell the difference. So I do appreciate the fact that it's genuine or premium materials. So anyway, all that said, I'll give it a B as a gentleman's knife. So overall, as an NTGK, we're going to say a B plus. So next, how about my KN rating? KN is for knife nerds. What will my knife nerd friends think? Well, the good is the materials. Good steel, famous steel, good materials, titanium, interesting finish, carbon fiber. So, you know, very nice, wonderful holding feeling in the hand with that three-dimensional curvature. Just a you know, beautiful, comfortable knife to operate and to hold. The bad news, of course, is that some people just dis or dismiss slip joints um, because they don't lock and because you can't flick them to show off your, your flicking prowess. So I think knife nerds will like this knife about as much as they are capable of liking slip joints. I'd rate it as a B plus. And finally, the CMR cut myself rating. It's going to get an A because I have never cut myself. Uh, part of it is that because it's all two-hand operation, I think you're automatically keeping your body parts out of the way. And that half stop really helps as well. So it's a very safe knife to operate CMR of A. So um, that's going to bring us to the end. And the summary is, you know, in some ways, it's similar to the CEO in that it's a long, slender gents knife, but way better materials. Real carbon fiber, not the faux carbon fiber. High-end steel, titanium, you know, just a, a beautifully built knife in that style. Um, beautiful finish and a good blade that is pleasant to hold and cut with. I'm a little self-conscious using it in some crowds because it looks like a steak knife and that just feels a little bit weird. And it's a little awkward to carry lying across the bottom of my pocket. Um, so it, it's really for other locations, in my opinion. Uh, where, where it rides very nicely is in the uh, pen pocket of a suit jacket, uh, or as a desk decoration. Sitting on my, uh, on my desk as literally a high-end letter opener and, and desk jewelry. Might even try using it uh, as a skin do in my uh, sock the next time I'm wearing a kilt. Um, anyway, I like it a lot, despite the shortcomings that I have mentioned. I think it's a handsome knife, it's beautifully built, and it would be a good addition to many collections. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.